what I'm hoping to do today is just explore this, the graph of this function. And the function is the absolute value function, and it's these bars right here. And remember that absolute value means what is the distance of a number from zero. And it has these parts, these component parts here. And what I want to do today, if you don't mind, I just want to talk about what is the effect of this? What's the effect of A? So to make it simpler for us, I think we'll just rewrite this, and we'll say that our function is going to be the absolute value of x times some constant amount. So that's what your job is right now. Figure out what does A do? What happens when you change A? Change A. So if you can figure that out, you're in good shape. So let's try this. First thing I'm going to do is this. And if you have a, a TI Inspire or a TI Inspire CAS or TI Inspire CAS CX, you can do this function. It's really pretty easy. There's two ways to put in an absolute value function. First way is this one. You can just type in ABS. Type in ABS, open the parentheses, and type in X. And when you hit enter, it will give you your function back. Or another way that you could have done it was this. You go up here like this. Let's go to this. And you see it actually rewrote it for you, but you could just put it in like this if you wanted to. You could hit this button right here, right? The red button right there. And you could choose this. And you can just type in X and hit enter, and you get the same thing back. All right? So here's my question. Right now, what we have is we have 1 times the absolute value of X. And what I wonder is what happens if we have 2 times the absolute value of X? So I have 2. I hit the multiplication sign. I hit this screen again. Chose this. Drop in X. And what do you think is going to happen here? So think about this for a second. Tell me what you think is going to happen. And then we hit enter. Is that what you expected? And it does make some sense, I think, because the absolute value, look, look at the red function for a second. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is also positive 2, isn't it? But if we look at the green function, the absolute value of 1 times 2, the absolute value of 1 is 1, but times 2 is 2. So it's growing faster. It's steeper, isn't it? So let's try that on a couple more. So let's just put in another one. Just go back here. Tap this. You can just hit your tab screen, uh, tab button. Let's put in another value. Maybe 9. So what's 9 times the absolute value of x? And before you type, before you hit enter, just think for a second. What do you think is going to happen here? So is that what you expected to happen? The thing seems to be growing much faster. It's much steeper. Steeper than what? Steeper than the red function because that's what we're comparing everything to. What if we went the other way? What if we said, instead of having this is, right, 1 times, what if we got some other positive number that's less than 1, like 1 half? So if you hit control, division, it gives you this fraction right here. I'm going to put 1 half times the absolute value. So here's absolute value. Choose that of x. Now what do you think that's going to look like? If when it got, if when the number went away from Zero, it got steeper. What happens as the number as the number in front gets closer to zero? We get this. Is this what you were expecting? And what happens if it gets even closer? What if we put in another one and we get a number that's even closer to zero? So you control division. Maybe I'll put in one over I don't know ten times the absolute value of x and hit enter. What do you think that's going to look like? See if you can figure out on the screen what you think is going to happen. Is that what you thought was going to happen? So then what I hear from people, they say, oh, well, try to have this figured out. As A, right, that's, that's what we're investigating here, A, as A gets bigger and bigger, the graph gets steeper and steeper. And as A gets smaller and smaller, the graph gets flatter and flatter. Well, that makes pretty good sense until you try this. So I hit this. I hit Control. No, no, I hit Control. Hit this. I'm going to put in, oh, let's do this. Let's do the opposite of this one right here. So this is positive absolute value of x. So what if we did this? What if we did the opposite of the absolute value of x? So now we have this opposite sign here. You think of it as a negative sign. What do you think is going to happen? Well, it gives us a reflection over the x-axis, doesn't it? So what happens if we get a, number, a negative number but it's close to zero? What do you think will happen there? Well, what do we try? What if we try negative, control, division, one-half 
absolute value of x. If nothing else, you're going to get good at finding the absolute value stuff, aren't you? Absolute value of x. So, <coughs> what is the truth of this? How does this work? And isn't it true that the opposite of what you maybe thought was true, that what really happens is as a number gets farther and far, farther from zero, as the, this number in front gets farther and farther from zero, the graph gets steeper and steeper. And as it gets closer and closer to zero, as A gets closer and closer to zero, the whole thing gets flatter. Isn't that right? So I'm really interested in your comments on this. And if nothing else, it's a really cool picture, isn't it? Looks like a, like, like it's three-dimensional, like we're looking down into a cone or something. Okay, dying to hear what you think about this. Please subscribe.